UIM F1H2O World Powerboat Championship returned to China for the UIM F1H2O Grand Prix of Liu Zhao, round four of the 2017 season. Liu Zhao is one of the most picturesque and iconic corners of China. Situated in Guangxi Province, Liu Zhao is remarkable for its stunning natural beauty, unique topography, lush scenery, and the karst-dotted landscape that makes this a truly special destination, attracting tourists and visitors from far and wide all year round. Liu Zhao has a history that goes back thousands of years with a rich and rooted culture and tradition. But Liu Zhao is also a big, bustling, modern metropolis of three million inhabitants, a center of modern industry and commerce with a sophisticated and dynamic young population that has its sights set on the future without forgetting the heritage of its past. Liu Zhao is a city of light as skyscrapers soar in the city center and hotels, cafes, boutiques, restaurants, bars and nightclubs come alive day and night in a 24-hour kaleidoscope of colors and movement. Liu Zhao hosted its 10th UIM F1H2O Grand Prix, raced on the 68th National Day of the People's Republic, as an ancient nation celebrated by flocking to the shores of the mighty River Liu to enjoy the world's most prestigious powerboat racing series, contested to the backdrop of the region's stunning natural beauty. Now let's take a look at what happened in the previous round. Round three was in Harbin, China, which hosted its second consecutive UIM F1H2O Grand Prix. And what a historic Grand Prix it was. Team Sweden's Eric Stark won a dramatic pole position in the BRM official qualifying, in which Sammy Celio suffered a dramatic barrel roll, uninjured, but having to race a spare boat for the Grand Prix. Stark got his race off to the perfect start in pole, taking the lead right off the pontoon despite the challenge from Thani Al Kamzi. The veteran from Team Abu Dhabi gave chase for 16 laps when the yellow flag came up as Moritz Stromoy took out two buoys, resulting in her disqualification. Stark made no mistakes on the restart, holding off Al Kamzi, but it was Ahmed Al Hamili who made the most of the yellow flag bunch up to overtake Alex Carella and his teammate Sean Torrente, moving him up from fifth position to third behind his former teammate Al Kamzi. Torrente's luck ran out on lap 22, forced to retire with engine failure, while Philip Schiap had a quiet race, trailing the lead boats in fifth position behind Alex Carella in fourth. With Sammy Celio also having retired on lap eight, Stark knew this was his chance as he held on and produced a faultless drive, keeping his nerve against Al Kamzi to produce a maiden F1H2O win in his 22nd Grand Prix race. That makes him the newest member of the elite Grand Prix Winners Club. Al Kamzi runner-up, Al Hamili on the podium in third, followed by Corella and Schiap. The win in Harbin catapulted Stark to third place in the World Championship standings, tied with Philip Schiap on 27 points. Alex Corella remained on top with 38 points after round three, Celio dropping to second, and Al Hamili completing the top five. has been one of the most tightly contested seasons yet. Nine teams and 19 drivers from 12 countries were in Liu Zhao for round four as the season hit the halfway mark. All eyes were on the home team, CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team, and the three-time consecutive and defending world champion Philip Schiap of France. Schiap and the team is under pressure after a DNF and a fifth, recurring electrical problems, and now switching to their new boat. It's make or break time for C. Oh. 
a good result in uh, Arbin and uh, the championship uh, we have 11 points. So for sure it's a pressure and we do make a good result from this year. In Shiap's way stands Alex Carella of Team Abu Dhabi, who now sits atop the world standings. The Italian ace has not been able to break Shiap's hold on the world title in three years, but he's back on top of his game in fine form all season and backed by a very good team with his exceptional teammate Tani Alcamzi and led by 10-time world champion Guido Capellini. Eric Stark is the man of the hour and everyone is looking to see whether the 29-year-old from Team Sweden can repeat his maiden win in Harbin with another win in Liu Zhao. Will he be able to keep his cool to continue his title hopes in 2017? He'll be racing with five-time Grand Prix and former China Grand Prix winner Jonas Anderson. It's been an up and down season for victory team, Torrente having a disappointing time of it. Just 12 points earned by the midway mark of the year. But his teammate Ahmed Al Hamali has been in fine form with a fourth place finish in Evian, followed by a podium third place in Harbin. He wants to keep that momentum. After that power roll in qualifying in the last round in Harbin, Sami Celio of Mad Croc Baba Racing Team faced a tough task to have his favorite race boat repaired in time. Despite being second in the world standings going into Liu Zhao, the four-time China Grand Prix winner knew he had his work cut out for him. After the last race, of course, we came here a little bit early to Liu Zhu to repair my boat. We was lucky to, to be able to fix the boat. It was hard crashed there in Harbin and uh, now the boat is fixed. We went through all the stuff in the boat, everything looks good. Boat was running today, so everything should be fixed. Also in the mix in this highly talented field of drivers were the likes of Duarte Benevente in seventh place in the world standings, Grand Prix winner Maritz Stromoy, Blaze Team's Bartek Marsalek, and 11-time Grand Prix winner Francesco Cantando. The 2.02 kilometer circuit on the River Liu is a technical one with strong currents, featuring five left turns and a tricky right-hander. The course here in Liu is actually really fun. It's, a, it's one of my favorite courses to drive on. It's really technical, which I like, and it's, um, it's usually pretty smooth, so it's fast. Um, but also, you also have to fight the weather here because it's so humid here, it kills the horsepower of the engine. So once again, it makes the course really technical for the driver to get the most out of the boat without as much power as you normally would have. Ah, it's an awesome course. It actually reminds me of Abu Dhabi. You know, the, the water's a bit dead here, but it's fun when, you know, we're getting a lot of time in the boat. And it's all just learning for us as a new team. Propeller design is paramount in Formula One these days. Not only does it act as a form of gearing, but also it acts as the final propulsion, a little bit like a, a tyre is on a racing car. Now propellers, as you can see, come in all shapes and sizes, um, and these depend on the type of circuit you're going to be running on. For instance, this type of propeller, on a long circuit where you're looking for top speed, you'll run a propeller with bigger blade area from here to here, and also a slightly more of a cupping on it. So that will not give you quite so much acceleration, but a lot more top end. And on a shorter circuit with lots of corners, again, what you're doing is you're cutting down the size of the propeller and the pitch is smaller. And by that, it means you've got more acceleration, a little bit less speed, but you're gonna get around the circuit that much quicker. Now, there's two methods in the propeller design, the manufacture of a propeller. You have basically a propeller that is cast and then machine finished afterwards. Or, in this case, this propeller is actually made from a piece of forged metal. So it comes as a block, and then you have a special machine, it's called a CNC machine, and it actually cuts from that block that identical shape. So, if you have a forged propeller, it is obviously more expensive, but it does mean that all the size of each blade is perfect, and you can fine-tune them a lot better to suit the boat. Official qualifying would be contested over th three 
sessions, the field reduced to 12 in Q1, then down to six in Q2. In Q3, those six boats would have a course of themselves with two laps each to lay down the fastest time in a bid for pole position. For me today is uh, 50 per, more than 50% of the championship take the pole here and uh, we give it all and uh, let's see what happens today. In Q1, Parben pole and race winner Eric Stark came out all guns blazing, laying down a fast time. But there was drama at the back as Grant Trask of F1 Atlantic team just managed to squeeze in an 11th position at the expense of his teammate Duarte Benevente, who was out in Q1. Mike Shimura of Emirates Racing Team did well qualifying in 12th and edging out Philip Morin of CTIC F1 Shenzhen China, as well as Philip Roms of Mad Croc Baba. Also unable to make the Q2 cut were Blaze Performance drivers Francesco Cantando and Bartek Marshalek and Maverick F1 drivers Cedric de Guin and Amari Jassam. In Q2, Sean Torrente was uncharacteristically off the pace, struggling two seconds behind the lead pace setters, Shiap, Al Hamili, Corella, and Stark. Ah, uh, story of my year. This time it was a trim pump failure, so we add that to the list. Team Abu Dhabi's young driver Rashid Al Kamzi was in his first ever Q2, going strong in eighth, but he was unable to crack the top six. Sammy Celio was pushing hard and he barrel rolled. It was a huge crash, barrel rolling in the air, his second qualifying crash in a row, leaving question marks for the race all over the two time world champion from Finland. Pushing maximum and then suddenly was the, again, bad wave there. When you're pushing maximum, sometimes it's happened and now it's happened second time to me and then I barrel rolled, so that's it. Also out in Q2 was Mike Shimura, Grant Trask, and Tani Alkamzi. Although Jonas Anderson qualified for Q3, his boat broke down at the end of Q2, which meant Moritz Stromoy would be up next, having qualified for Q3 in fifth. She got in a good lap, but it was not much quicker than her Q2 time. Next out was Eric Stark. He set down a blazing lap, beating his former teammate's time by nearly a second to take provisional pole. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy, like it was the maximum I think we could do, so let's see what the other guys do. Stark was followed by Alex Carella. The Italian has won 13 pole positions in his career, and he went out with pole in his sights again. It was a beautiful run. The Italian brilliant when he's on his game. What a time, 44.72, breaking his own fastest time of the weekend as he took provisional pole. Carella was followed by Ahmed Al-Hamili, the Emirati putting in a good lap, but unable to beat either Carella's or Stark's fastest lap. Last out was Q2's fastest man, Philip Schiap. The pressure was on, with a local crowd's hopes pinned on the Frenchman. He knew just how important it was to have pole position going into the race. He pushed with all he had for the first lap, but it was no good, not even able to beat his Q2 time. On his second lap, it's also frustration for the Frenchman, finishing in fifth position behind Stromoy. Alex Carella claims the 14th pole position win of his career, and the world standings leader is in prime position for the Grand Prix of Liu Zhao. The number one here for sure is uh, really good today for me and for the team. I will try everything for make it more. With the drama, stress and pressure of a day's racing behind them, the UIM F1H2O family enjoyed hospitality the Chinese way at the gala dinner as drivers, crews and their families got to relax and unwind. The fourth round of the year would be raced in intense tropical heat, posing a serious challenge on drivers both physically and mentally, as thousands flocked to the banks of the Liu River to watch the 10th Grand Prix of Liu Zhao unfold. Can Xia bounce back from two disappointing rounds with the local support? Uh, the pressure is for the championship because it's not uh, good things. We do uh, fight for the for the victory for sure. Would Corella 
Roy uses pole advantage to extend his lead in the world standings. Okay, Alex in the front is not an easy, easy match, but uh, like it's, it's going to be a long and very, very hot race. So a lot can happen. Can Torrente weave his way back to the lead in this 48-lap race? I think we're in a good shape and have a good race. Start 10th, which is not where you want to start, but it's not where we're going to finish. So it'll be a good race. It'll be a good time. Corella starts from pole as he goes for a fourth win on the River Liu, with Eric Stark on his immediate inside, last year's pole and race winner Al Hamili in third. Marit Stromoy starts in fourth place for the first time since her win in Sharjah 2015. Sammy Celio starts in 18th after that Q2 crash forces a boat and engine change, and Grant Trask also changing an engine and relegated to 19. The countdown was on, drivers and teams pumped and ready for that all-important opening drag race to the commitment buoy. There they go, 19 boats storm off the pontoon, hitting speeds of 100 kilometers an hour as they lock horns on the starting straightaway. Bartek Marsalek lags behind as he's passed by Philip Roms on his left and Duarte Benevente to his right. Carella off to a solid start. Stromoy falls back as Shiap fights for fourth with the field, rounding the commitment buoy for a clean start to this 23rd Grand Prix in China. Torrente also has a good start, overhauling Mike Shimura to move up to ninth, setting his sights on Rashid Al Kamzi, who started in a career best eighth on the pontoon. Behind Shimura, Philip Roms of Mad Croc Baba makes an attempt at a pass on the inside, but the Emirates team driver shuts him out. That was a close call as the Finn contends with Shimura's spray. Despite a good start from 16th, Cedric Deguin is passed by Blaze performance drivers Marcelek and Cantando, dropping the French driver down two slots. With the first lap completed, positions remain unchanged at the top. Philip Schiap goes all out on the inside to wrest fourth spot from a tenacious Stromoy, and Schiap does it, overtaking Stromoy to move into fourth. There's a duel between the two Blaze teammates, Cantando and Marshalek. Marshalek overhauling his teammate and setting his sights on Benevente up ahead as they go around the right-hander, Yellow Bowie. Further back, Deguin continues to drop down the field as Celio comes up, moving up two spots, followed closely by Grant Trask, who moves up into 17th position behind the fin. Out in the lead, Corella is notoriously difficult to dislodge once he's in pole, but Stark is working hard to stay within striking distance of the Italian. Behind them, Al Hamili gives chase in third, with Schiap firmly entrenched in fourth spot ahead of Stromoy in fifth, with Anderson behind the Norwegian in sixth, followed by Harbin runner-up and former China Grand Prix winner Tiny Al Kamzi in seventh position. Torrente is in eighth ahead of Rashid Al Kamzi in ninth, and CTIC driver Peter Morin is in 11th behind Mike Sumura. Celio has moved up to 16th, Trask right behind him, Maverick F1 teammates Deguin and Amari Jassam bringing up the rear. Duarte Benevente in 12th spot, tries to sneak past Peter Morin on the inside, but Morin cuts in before the turn and holds the Portuguese veteran off to stay in 11th. But Benevente doesn't back down, keeping the pressure on Peter Morin as the Portuguese F1 Atlantic driver overhauls the CTIC driver in the next lap, moving him up a spot into 11th position. Behind Schiap, Stromoy and Anderson is a titanic battle unfolding for seventh between Tani Alcamzi and Sean Torrente. Torrente keeping a tight inside line and taking Alcamzi to move up into seventh in a victory Dubai versus Team Abu Dhabi showdown. Four-time China Grand Prix winner Sami Celio gets lapped by Ahmed Alhamili in third as Alhamili tries to fend off the Shiap threat coming up from behind him with Moritz Stromoy hot on Shiap's tail in fifth. With 12 laps down, Corella opens a comfortable lead over Eric Stark in second place, but all his hard work is undone by a yellow flag due to a drifting buoy, and the bunch-up provides the chance Stark was looking for to have a shot at taking Corella on the restart. Can Stark do it? He may not have any opportunities better than this coming his way. This is where the radio man's job is crucial in directing and timing their driver's restart to hold off challengers and possibly overtake the boats they've been chasing so far. Green flag, the race is... <laughs> Back on.
Corella is on the ball, making no mistakes as he fends off Eric Stark's aggressive attack. Philip Schiap has an exceptional restart as he nudges past Ahmed Al Hamali on the outside. The Frenchman moving up a spot into third at the victory team driver's expense. But Al Hamali's troubles are not over as Moritz Stromoy also finds clear water on the outside to get within a boat's length of the Emirati. But Al Hamali manages to hold on to fourth position with that inside line on the turn. Further back in the field, Philip Roms overshoots the turn and Bartek Marsalek is there to take advantage. The Polish place performance driver overhauling the young Finn. Up front, positions remain unchanged with Torrente still piling the pressure on Anderson as they round the yellow buoy with Tiny Alkamzi behind them. Torrente is very fast, he has the speed and the momentum and he does it, passing Anderson on the turn, moving up a spot into sixth behind Moritz Stromoy. With 22 laps down, Corella has opened his lead back up to almost four seconds over Stark. Schiap in third, then Al Hamali, Stromoy, and Torrente completing the top six. It looks like another classic Torrente versus Stromoy showdown is unfolding for fourth spot as the American zeroes in on the Norwegian Emirates Racing Team driver. The gap slowly tightened between Al Hamali, Stromoy, and Torrente in this three-way battle for third spot as the race passes the halfway mark. Stromoy hot on Al Hamali's heels as Scott Gilman urges Al Hamali on. Up in the lead, Stark does everything in his power to stay in touch with Corella, trying not to let that gap widen in these hot and humid conditions with just 17 laps left to race. The first boat to retire from this race is number 10 Duarte Benevente of F1 Atlantic team. Bad luck for the Portuguese driver. With just 11 laps left, Torrente moves up and goes neck and neck with Stromoy. Stromoy just manages to fend off the blue boat. Torrente is still right behind her and he makes another attempt cutting tight on the inside but Stromoy is on her toes once again defending successfully. Stromoy and Torrente's duel goes on for two laps as the two duck and weave in a classic skirmish until finally Torrente finds the outside speed to get past the Norwegian just before the right-hander. Torrente is up in fifth position, Stromoy bumped down to sixth. Disappointment for Stromoy as she falls back, losing speed and eventually drops out of the race with technical problems on lap 40, just eight laps before the end. Also out is Jonas Anderson, floating helplessly on the course. Out in the lead, Corella is just too good on the day, putting in a perfect race with just seven laps left before he can claim his 14th Grand Prix title. Eric Stark continues to give chase in second position, but the Swede must feel his chances have all but run out. Behind Stark, Schiap is still in third, but he has more than six seconds to bridge if he's to catch Stark, but a podium is still good points for Schiap and CTIC. The final lap, Alex Carella looking to add a fourth career Grand Prix win in Liu Zhao and a second Grand Prix win of the year as he now sees the end in sight. Alex Carella is the 2017 Grand Prix of Liu Zhao winner. The current world number one was flawless from start to finish and it's a well-earned win for Team Abu Dhabi. Corella's face says it all. 48 laps of racing in a cockpit where temperatures reach 50 degrees Celsius. It's a Herculean effort from the Italian. Starting to feel better now, but quite bad. But I'm happy for the race, but it's too hot. Schiap looking none the worse for wear after racking up much needed points. Who is young? Al Hamili holds on for fourth. Torrente with much needed points in fifth. Best ever result for Mike Shimura in seventh. Marshalek eighth, Roms and Cantando also earning points. Frustration for Celio Stromoy and Anderson. <laughs> team Abu Dhabi opens a 29 point lead over second place Team Sweden in the team championship standings with victory team in third ahead of CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team. Stark, uh, I think uh, men make a uh, bad choice uh, inside it. Uh, I can overtake him, but uh, and I prefer uh, get a third place for the championship. It's better to make a crash. Now we have no choice. We do win uh, Abu Dhabi and Sharjah. No, I pushed it like really, really hard the whole race, and like in the end, but. <laughs> Maybe the 
five last lap was really terrible. Um, I had was starting to shut off, so it was um, one of my toughest races ever, I think. Carilla extends his lead atop the world standings to 16 points after round four. Stark in second, three points up on Shiap in third, with Al Hamili on 30 points in fourth, and Celio slipping further down to fifth. Torrente struggling in seventh, Anderson back in tenth after that late breakdown. Yeah, it was too much today. With this hot, it was incredible. Eric, uh, he was fast since the first lap. Uh, uh, after lap by lap, I was getting tired and tired. It was almost all the time or more, uh, more difficult. But I can manage it. The boat was uh, really easy to drive and really helped me to arrive at the end and take this uh, important 20 points. That concludes another spectacular Grand Prix of Lujao. See you in Abu Dhabi for round five of the UIM F1H2O World Powerboat Championship.